HMS Ark Royal was lost to a single torpedo hit, which caused flooding in the engine room. For this reason, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales have two propulsion systems. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms channel. Okay, so today we are checking out a YouTube video from the channel, Not What You Think. Now, they have a lot of good stuff, but today we're checking out one about the Queen Elizabeth class of aircraft carriers. Now, I'm not sure if this aircraft carrier is a pretty new design. I have been seeing it in the news more than a lot of other ship classes for whatever reason, but it seems like really cool. I know it's got like that cool ramp design and whatnot, but this is why Queen Elizabeth carriers have twin islands. So I think when they're referring to islands, it's like the, I guess like the pilot house of the ship. I'm not really too familiar with, with aircraft carriers specifically. And there's something special about being on a, on a ship as well. I'm not sure why that is, but if you've been in the Navy or if you've just been on a military ship, you might kind of understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, we'll, we'll learn a little bit about the Queen Elizabeth class of aircraft carriers today. So this video is not too long. It's about four minutes. But yeah, let's learn a little bit more about the Queen Elizabeth because I got to say, I don't know a whole lot about it and I have been seeing a lot about it. So let's check it out. The newest British air carriers are the first ever to have a twin island design. But why did the British Navy come up with a design like that? Well, the answer oh. can only be found below the deck. In the Already looks room. complicated. To be exact, there are two engine rooms on the Queen Elizabeth class carriers and they are spaced apart in order to increase redundancy and survivability. See. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense already. Of course, you want to try and increase the survivability of a, of a ship, especially the engine. Like you have a lot of the new US like LCS ships that are kind of just breaking down a lot. So having some redundancy is definitely nice. But looking at this aircraft carrier, I mean, you can't really get a good appreciation for the size of an aircraft carrier kind of just looking at a video. But yeah, this thing looks like a beast. So having two engines might also help with just like the efficiency. Now, I don't think this is nuclear power, just judging by it saying there's engine rooms. I, I guess it's diesel powered, but hopefully this goes a little bit more in depth into that as well. See, during World War II, HMS Ark Royal was lost to a single torpedo hit, which caused flooding in the engine room. For this reason, HMS Queen That's Elizabeth scary stuff. and HMS Prince of Wales have two propulsion systems, which are separated. So in case one is compromised, okay. the other yep. can still function. Diesel. But this creates Makes a sense. problem, as both propulsion systems need their own set of exhaust shafts and downtakes. The gas turbine exhaust pipe is 2.4 meters in diameter, and it can't be okay. easily bent, meaning that the shaft has to be pretty <laughs> much on top of the engine room. Since the downtakes and huh. exhaust pipes are hidden within the island's megastructure, it means that the newest British air carriers could either have one long island, just like the Invincible class carriers, or two right. smaller islands. British. I mean, that kind of makes sense if you have twin engine design. You probably want to have like the twin islands for the two exhausts, but this is getting very, very technical and it's going to quickly get above my, my level of knowledge. But what I'm thinking is, I mean, with, with ships, especially with the way they're painted, they're pretty hard to see when they're on the horizon. But if you have a ship that has these, this twin uh, this twin island design, I feel like it's going to be pretty easy to identify, even from like really, really far away. Now, the aircraft carrier itself, of course, is going to be accompanied by multiple other ships. But I mean, it might be really easy just to, to help identify it, which I'm not sure is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. But this is something I'm thinking about. Engineers conducted a thorough analysis to pick which design is better. And since we already know the outcome, we will discuss the five advantages of having a twin island design and one major disadvantage. So the cool. first advantage is that the two smaller islands have less footprint than the one bigger island. The space between the two islands can be used to install an aircraft lift, which is a much better use of space. Ah, okay. The second That's cool. advantage is reduced air turbulence on the flight deck. Turbulent air is a major obstacle in flight operations and having yeah. less of it is always a good thing. Huh. The third advantage is increased visibility for both ship operations and the flight control. Having a front island more forward to the bow of the boat results in better visibility for the crew on the bridge, especially mm. in tighter waters. Traditional aircraft carriers, I think for whatever reason, just based off of like the design on the bottom, they list uh, a crap ton. So I feel like if there's one big island, it might be more prone to listing more. I don't really know if that's how that works, but I feel like if there's a lot of wind hitting one big island, that might be a little bit easier to get some of that listing going. Flight Control, also known as Flyco, is just an appendix section of the bridge. 
but with a second island dedicated to Flyco, <laughs> little you can screen there, it in an optimal location towards the stern of the carrier, as that is where the planes land. The Flyco Tower has a 290 degree view of the flight deck through giant okay. three meter tall windows. Having such a view <laughs> simplifies things. What a view, though! Look at that. Aircraft controllers awareness as they talk through the landing procedures with the pilots. The fourth advantage is that the twin island design allows for better separation for the main radars, since having two sets of hmm. radars on two separate islands decreases signal interference and blind spots. The fifth It's so crazy to think all the, the thought processes going into one specific ship or like just one aspect of a ship, like the island itself, whether making two islands or one island, especially, I mean, of course, you need to know what goes on a ship and how to best implement it to understand how you're going to design it. Because for me, I mean, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't think twice about, you know, one island versus two and what the pros and cons are for both. But I can imagine the visibility definitely helps a lot. I know for me, if I was like the commander on a ship, I'd like those guys to have some pretty good visibility if we have very, very expensive F-35s landing and taking off on this sucker. And final advantage of having twin islands is that they can be constructed off-site as separate units and then installed into the hull. <laughs> this is much easier than building one large island made of many modules. But what okay. about the disadvantages? Well, uh, the sure. biggest disadvantage actually <laughs> seems to be the physical separation itself. See, the front island is primarily used for ship control, and the island toward mm. the back is used for flyco, for flying control. That Since does seem like it would help a lot. Aircrafts from a moving ship is a delicate process. It means that ship control and flying control need to be in constant communications, as the ship's heading and hmm. speed must be precise during launches and landings. Oh, okay. Having ship yeah, so that is a good point. I know being on a ship, again, I haven't been on an aircraft carrier enough to really understand like all the aspects that go inv that get involved into that stuff. But on a normal ship, when you're in like the, the pilot house or whatever, the, the bridge, I don't know what else you want to call it. But when you're in the pilot house where you have like the people driving the ship and whatnot, there's usually not that many people, and I think it works out well when there's not that many people. Of course, when you know there's actual operations going on, there's going to be more traffic going in and out. But I think having that separation is nice because you have the people who are focusing on you know maneuvering the ship and making sure it's going in the right direction, and then you have like the flight control guys, so they're able to focus a little bit better on what they're doing. But yeah, again, I guess it can get pretty specific on how you need to have a certain heading or whatnot so you can actually relay that stuff to the pilots. Control officers and flight control officers work together in close proximity simplifies things. So now having hmm. them on different islands means that they have to rely on intercom for their communications. This is something that will take some time to get used to. That said, yeah, in no case doubt. one of the islands is compromised, the second one can assume its functions and vice versa. If the intercom breaks, even oh. though not ideal, everything <laughs> can still be run from one of the islands. You gotta break out the flags. What do you think about this twin island design? Be honest, does it look ugly? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> and as always, okay. thanks for watching. <laughs> Again, I don't really think so much about looks. There's definitely a lot of people that would talk about the, the looks aspect of a ship when it comes to stuff like that. But I think it looks fine if you're going to talk about it. But again, aircraft carriers themselves have a very specific purpose. So everything on them is going to be built a specific way. So I mean, I guess it does make sense that having that division might make things a little bit harder. But I feel like for most operations, it's going to be advantageous. Maybe when things get hectic, you want to have that that one island design. But I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's just it's nice to get the gear spinning thinking about this kind of stuff. And again, being on ship is kind of like a weird love-hate relationship. But learning about the technology and just looking at these cool new ships is really, really fascinating stuff. So again, if you guys have any recommendations, don't be greedy. Throw them down in the comment section so I can do some reactions and share that info with all you guys. And also just share the, the cool YouTube channels out there because there's a lot of great YouTube channels out there that give information and insights into a lot of this stuff. And it's nice to be able to share that with y'all. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, all that good stuff. Thank you for watching. That is it for this video. I will see y'all in the next one.